International Ecom Day. My name is Albert and I'm going to be your host for the next hour. Uh, I would like to thank all of you for uh, attending this session and I would like to thank our dear partners GetResponse for their entire support in, uh, in making this uh, happen. I would like to let you know that after uh, Mustafa is going to uh, have his presentation, we're going to have a Q&A session of 10 minutes. You can ask your questions in the, in the chat bar here and Mustafa will, will answer all of them. Uh, in the same time, we're, we're having a competition, meaning that if you get some valuable uh, insights that you consider worth sharing or uh, print screen or something like that with the hashtag EcomDay2017 uh, on platforms such as LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, then go for it and you are uh, eligible of winning uh, an only convert account worth uh, 9,000 uh, USD. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to do a short introduction of uh, Mustafa. He's founder and CEO of Ascend eVentures and in the same time he's a lecturer on e-commerce at TFUPN. Mustafa, the floor is all yours. Thanks so much, Albert. Thanks so much, Albert. Uh, first of all, thanks, first of all, so, much thanks so much for the uh, invite. And it's great to be able to uh, come back and join you guys, uh, join Omni Carnival, which, by the way, is a fantastic name now. Um, so it's great to be part of this uh, very awesome day. Um, so it's, it's wonderful. Thank you, Valentin. Thank you, Alex, Albert, uh, Joanna. It's great to be here. So, guys, it's, it's Thanks for everybody for your time. I appreciate it. It's um, I have a I have a slide. Basically, I'll share with you guys in terms of best practices for e-commerce platform selection. I'll give you a background about myself, and so you can see you know where I'm coming from, and my backgrounds, and some of the things that I've I've picked up in my 27, 20, 20 plus year uh, career in this area of e-commerce. So. I'll get started basically with um, all right. So here's a brief background. Um, I will go into an area of e-commerce best practices, and I'm looking at basically some of the applications that we have been working with over the years, and I'll share those with you, and um, some of the open source technologies that we have used. And a lot of these are going to be something you're probably familiar with, but I want to share some, some of my backgrounds and some of my experiences with you. So very briefly, this is the quick, just quick intro from my background. I've been involved with e-commerce and internet and development technologies uh, since day one, right? Since the, since the Trojan Room coffee pot, if you guys, some of you probably, I hope can still remember that. It's those early days of the web when web pages were all gray, uh, Times New Roman font was the only font available. Uh, links were blue, backlinks were purple. I'm from those days, right? So yeah, so I've been there from the early days. Uh, so I had an e-commerce store selling contact lenses back in the mid '90s when I was going to school in Nebraska, USA. Uh, so in 2000, moved to Sydney, Australia. Started, you know, some e-commerce development projects and companies there. And then in 2000. Uh, came to Saudi Arabia, so I was fortunate enough to teach the first e-commerce class in Saudi Arabia at King Fahad University of Petroleum and Minerals. So I teach e-commerce. Uh, I've been a lecturer here for well, 17 years now. It's 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 pretty awesome, and I have seen basically you know uh, e-commerce from its very very early days to what the stage is right now in e-commerce here in the Middle East. So I've been involved with. The teaching part of it, I love the teaching, can't stay away from the classroom. And, uh, but, you know, e-commerce is such a dynamic area. I had to get my hands dirty into the website and actually into an e-commerce business. So I co-founded with a, with a friend of mine, uh, a company called SealTap. So this was the first pure play e-commerce site uh, to be selling gadgets, electronics here in Saudi Arabia. And then we moved to Bahrain in 2012. And then I've been working with another company called Paytabs, which is uh, another company we, we started. Um, this is now the PayPal of the Middle East, right? So it's just recently just won some awards. Uh, those are Joe for the CEO of there, and um, it's doing really, really well. And so over the last you know, 
last few years, I've been receiving a lot of, lot of uh, requests for help and assistance. And that's when I said, you know, I have a fantastic team, uh, people that I've worked with for 10 years, some of them for about 17 years. And I said, you know what, the best thing would be to set up something formally. And now we have a digital consultancy that basically helps startups and e-commerce companies with all the challenges. Just to give some context of where e-commerce is in the Middle East, uh, and then we'll get into the best practices. E-commerce in the Middle East has really, really taken off uh, in the last, uh, I would say, you know, um, especially in the last five years, right? So this is just from this year. This is just literally from you know, a couple of months ago when Amazon uh, bought uh, Soup.com. So this was the, you know, the, the largest e-commerce site in the Middle East, so Amazon bought that. So this became very, very major news. Uh, towards the end of last year, we had uh, a brand new company set up, and this was the first billion dollar company with a B uh, that started up in Saudi Arabia, also runs out of Dubai, and this is called Noon.com. So they, that again was a major, major investment. And then another, transaction, which is Jada Pay to got, pur got purchased. So e-commerce is really taking off in the Middle East and it's a very, very fantastic time. So all you developers and all you uh, software companies out there, Middle East is where you really wanna be because it's really, really exciting right now. All right, all right. so how do I get started? I'm, I'm gonna share some best best practices, things that I've learned over the last you know 20 plus years, and I'm really excited to share that with you. And then I'll get into some of the technology, some of the sites involved in, in getting these. So when you're working on a project, you know, definitely take a look at the bigger picture, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, there is a lot of fear that companies and IT managers sometimes have an issue with, but you know, um, it's, it's all with your team. So look at the big picture and work towards that. And if you're in the management of such a, such a project, this is gonna be fundamental for you because all the people that come after you, employee number two, three, four, 10, 25, they're always gonna to look to you, right? So they always make sure that big picture is there. Um, and I think this was mentioned just in a previous um, presentation. Uh, the gentleman was talking about in terms of, you know, um, make sure that you have, you know, a very, very cross-functional um, teams and the you know, department that working towards, and this is really, really important because you cannot work in silos. So basically you need to understand and work as one particular team, you need to work as one engine, right? So you guys work together uh, with your digital marketing, with all your tech, with your promotions, with HR, set up a very, very fantastic company, you can. Um, so, you know, set the goals and you know, success metrics in terms of, you know, this is really important. Don't mind the order numbering, I'll just play around the slides a little bit. Um, this is really, really important because one of the things that especially for your management that you need to get involved with is make sure there are some metrics that have been established with your, with, you know, in conjunction with your management in terms of how are you gonna measure the success of your website? Success is not just sales, right? Success is a lot of factors that have to happen in a very proper order for those sales to happen. And that's why, you know, uh, when you work with great companies like Omniconvert, uh, this, is what, this is what happens, right? They basically, you're able to understand, do your rigorous testing, and always be able to, you know, optimize your conversions. It's really about that. I work with a lot of developers, and really for them, the, the, you know, the attractiveness of the site, et cetera, that's important. It is, right? The site performance is really, really important. But if you have a site that doesn't convert, you just, you just have a website. You need to have a successful website, right? So this is something, you know, uh, keep this in mind. Find out the model that works for you, right? So you need to find out, you know, what are your conversion methods? What are your uh, revenue models, right? One of the things that I've always liked to share with my junior members, right? You, se you set like a North Star for them, right? Set something up that allows them, allows you and your organization to everybody to follow. Right, so you all are working towards one goal. You'll have a major catastrophe, and I don't use that word uh, with caution. I'm using that, you know, uh, it'll become a disaster if everybody's working in a different ways, right? So you need to have one North Star that everybody's converging towards, right? And that's, that's what you have to work towards. And in that way, no matter, no matter how big you're getting, no matter which 
marketing teams are working, etc. You are all working towards one particular goal, and this is really I found that to be really important. You, you have to prioritize, prioritize, and prioritize again. You know, uh, based on you know, all the things that are super important for you guys, right? Make sure, um, make sure you prioritize that. Prioritize that. Yes, there will be so many departments that want your attention. And by the way, there's nothing wrong whatsoever by saying no to a certain department. You know, things can always get done, but there's a proper time and there's a, there's a to-do list that you have. Right? So you need to make sure um, you can always say no. Nothing wrong with that. Right? It is all about your team, right? So um, make sure you have a, the, make sure you can build the most amazing, the most fantastic team ever. And this constitutes to a lot of your success factors, right? And I'm sure a lot of you um, are already involved on projects, and it's, it's so fundamentally important. A lot of times, you know, sometimes people forget that, but it is all about your team. It is with the passion that you bring into your team, uh, and that's one of the things that we've always kept in mind when we've done some hiring. You want to bring in the most passionate, hardworking, smart, people right um, be careful they're hiring experts right experts tend to uh, not want to change things so this is just you know some, some words to just keep keep in your mind as you build your most amazing team ever some of you have uh, maybe have seen what this team is uh, definitely let me know what the team is uh, in the chat I'd love to know who who's familiar with this uh, college football team from from the United States all right Okay, um, another reason why your team is so, so important and another reason, again, why you're, you cannot afford to work in silos is because you have major, major integrations that need to happen, right? Um, and if that's the case, your, your team all have to be on one page. Otherwise, you will you know, uh, end up with delayed deadlines you know, and people getting upset and try to avoid that, right? Try to avoid any of that. So you have a, have a pretty, amazing roadmap and you're working towards that okay um, we'll cover you know some of the software that you know that you're working with in terms of on-demand software you probably are familiar with these I'm just putting it out there in terms of you know some some good companies to look at um, this is the on-demand model so this is you, know, you don't have to have a very large IT team this is Shopify based out of Canada um, really good on-demand web-based solution and you're able to set up your store and really if, you, if you're familiar with you know, the type of sites that can be set up this is fairly fairly easy to set up and they're a great company uh, very helpful people they'll help you set set things up right this is an on-demand model of that evolution is another one very popular with uh, american markets in terms of you know setting up your store and these are very very proven uh, websites that have that have thousands of products right Amazon, you can't avoid Amazon. Amazon is the, you know, is the one, you know, uh, mother of all things in terms of when it comes to uh, e-commerce, right? They, they definitely could write the book on it. So these are, they also have, you know, Amazon stores that we can set up your store. Um, and, you know, in, in setting up your e-commerce business, right, your, your startup is going to play a very, very major role. And this is one thing I've, I've always kept in mind in terms of, you know, in terms of setting up your business, it's you have to believe in yourself, believe in your team. Uh, it makes it makes it goes a very very long way in you know in, in terms of doing that. Right. Okay. Um, your own hosting, right? You you're setting up your own hosting um, because I teach e-commerce also, so I'm using the open source stack. So a lot of times it's it's really really useful to spend maybe a couple of hours and you can set your own web server up. So this is an setting it up on your own environment whether you're on windows mac or linux and you'll set up zamp right? so zamp is basically uh, apache mysql or apache mario db php and Perl. so you set up that environment on your own machines on your own servers and after that you're able to now install uh, pretty much any engine you want so in our classes we have students get this up and running and a lot of times you know they're coming from different backgrounds and you know, sometimes it takes a while to get this done. Previously, I used to be even meaner in my classes. So what I used to do is have them download Apache, MySQL, PHP, all separately, and then try to get all that working. It was, it was you know, they used to pull the hair out because uh, it was always something interesting, right? We always download the latest software 
and you know how software never wants to work together. So it was good for them. They got a very good learning experience out of it. But now we stop that. Now we just use an all-in-one program and just download it, install it, and then they were able to install their um, applications on top of that. So those applications that you are most likely familiar with, um, I'll start with OpenCard. OpenCard has come a really, really long way uh, over time. The dashboard, it, it's one of its you know, major strengths, definitely. It's, it's, you're able to find out all your conversions, your total sales, uh, and because being open source, you are able to modify, customize, and build upon right, this platform itself. So very, very useful, especially for those, for those startups or even an established company, if you have some you know, pretty competent developers that are passionate about open source technology, this, is, this becomes really, really useful. Uh, again, these are all proven technologies, each of them having you know, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of installs. That's open cart, very, very proven, really useful. And guys, remember, there are probably 25 other softwares out there. I'm just sharing some I have experience with. And um, when I upload the slides, I'll, I'll put a lot more in there. Right? It's just that I want to cover some in the 30 minutes and then you know, move on from there. Pressure Shop, you are already familiar with that. I've seen it mentioned by a couple of our speakers. Um, this is based out, of, uh, based out of France. Very, very proven technology. Um, fantastic. These are all fantastic uh, open source technologies. And one of the things that you know, people sometimes have a hard time believing, these cost nothing. So literally, you, you could, technically speaking, launch your website for free. And it's, you know, it's, it's wonderful to be able to do that. Um, a lot of times people ask me, clients, students ask me, you know, does free mean that it's no good? I said, no, 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 free means it's perfect because first of all, free is great, right? We all love free. And second of all, these are not, free does not mean inferior. So sites running on Presta Shop, Open Cart, OS Commerce, WooCommerce, they can handle thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, millions of you know, customers, concurrent transactions. That's not really an issue. Uh, so these are very proven. It's just that they're they're open source. So they you can't you can't pay a company for the support part of it, right? That is, you can't have that as a paid product. But uh, it's wonderful. You can be up and running literally in an afternoon. So that's that's pressure shop. Okay, there is a um, magic quadrant that is available from Gartner, and I think yeah, you should be able to see this. So Gartner has you know has really, really good reports in terms of people that are looking to evaluate software. Right? So it's an industry analyst report. Um, so they, they basically do this on a yearly basis where they look at the, you know, the top enterprise softwares out there and uh, they classify them as leaders in the top right. On the top left, you have challengers, you have niche flares and visionaries. So basically, um, as you are inside the quadrant, you your place in different areas. So, um, looking at the leader track, right? You basically have uh, Oracle, IBM. I'll not go through every single one of them, but you do have them. I will really highly encourage you to, um, you know, download this report. Pretty much every single company that is mentioned inside this quadrant has the report for free, so you don't have to pay for this, right? So it's it's really good. Um, my students have an exam. To say, you know, my students have an exam on Friday. Poor guys, they have to, they don't have to memorize, but they do have to know which company pl is placed in which quadrant. I hope they're not gonna hate me for this, but it's really, really useful uh, because they do get to learn some of the most industrial practices available, right? So there's a couple of really, really good, good players that are moving towards the right, you know, top right, which is in terms of uh, leaders, All right? So this is the leadership quadrant in terms of IBM, Oracle, um, SAP bought a company called Hybris, um, and then you got Salesforce, Digital River. Magento is is probably is one that is getting a lot of good attention, and I'm sure you're you're familiar with these ones. And I'll, I'll come back to this one. Okay, in terms of that, research and planning goes a very long way, as you know. Uh, there is you know very very important for you to know your you know, your goals and you know why they're important. So this is really really useful to do that uh, to make sure. That, that goes a long way. Create a scope, you know, know all your goals in terms of, you know, create a you know, scope of work document, share it with everybody involved. The worst thing in a project that involves 
customers, that involves sales departments, IT department, of course, and of course your CEO is no one wants surprises, right? The last thing you want is to have a surprise about, uh, about anything. So minimize that and communication, of course, is the, is the uh, major requirement here. And this is again, in terms of getting something established, put it all onto paper, figure out your milestones and deliverables, and, and I'm sure you have worked on projects like this where it's, it's crucial, right? It's really, really important to understand and make sure everything is analyzed, right? So, so your systems analysis is very, very important. So your meetings with clients is super important, whether the client is a customer outside of your organization or in-house, right? All of that is super, super important, right? Uh, the the, the age-old question, do you build or do you outsource this, right? This is the, this is the, this is a major question. So I think it depends on the resource that you have. There is pros and cons of doing both. I mean, you know, no one takes better care of your product than yourself, right? But at the same time, with a resource that you have. I worked with a CEO one time and he, he just insisted that the website literally stay in his line of sight. And I told him, I said, you know, line of sight does not mean the site will be secure, right? You need to have it in a secure environment. Just because you can see it does not mean it is secure. So you need to, you need to balance that, right? So build or outsource, super important question that has to be addressed and has to be addressed properly. Right, so um, goes back to the team. If you have a superstar team, it's it's wonderful. You can you can do amazing things, right? But make sure there's quite a few um, things taken care of in terms of um, the integrations that need to happen. Everything has has a time and place for that to happen. Um, you know, if you would outsource it, you need to pick a superstar company. Uh, I've always believed in you know working with the best because that way you will get the best. And there's some companies that you know, I've, I've seen mentioned here, uh, Devante based out of Poland, we have fantastic companies uh, such as that. Uh, we've worked with, at Ascend, we've worked with uh, Piotr and, you know, um, you know from, um, from Devante. They're just amazing companies out there. Work with the ones that you get along with. Work with the ones that have similar visions to what you guys are also having. And they're, they're great companies that are, you know, that can help you deliver, um, and this is, this is what it's about, right? So you can definitely reduce the cost when it comes to you know, going to offshore development. They will have a dedicated team. So it's, you know, it's hard for a lot of setups to have your own security environments, uh, your own sysops, right, system operations. But when you outsource that, you have a dedicated team that is working for you. And uh, there's, there's a project one time I worked on where they literally had a camera on, you know, on a cubicle that had like, Two or three people on a cubicle, and literally it was my offsite team, and I could literally see them from you know, um, all for the eight hours they're supposed to give me. So companies will go out of their way to make it convenient for them uh, to be viewed by you in terms of you know to make sure that you know they're putting in their eight hours and such. But really, it's about the team. So make sure you have a great team working with you, um, and all of this matters, right? The cost matters, right? You know, will your business requirements be met? This is very very important. So. Uh, the worst thing is you finish a project and you go to the client, the client says, you know, it, there are things missing. So your big presentation, you know, all the air is out of it now, you know, out of the, so basically you need to make sure it's high performance, scalable, make sure that it flows well. And of course, the UI, the UX that I've been already mentioned tonight um, are very, very important. Site metrics, make sure they are defined, make sure everybody's clear. And this goes back to the node start that you can set up, right? So everybody knows uh, what they're following. And this is why it's, it's, you know, it'll increase your chance of success. Some of my favorite sites, right? So I'm one of those people that just, you know, I'll go to a website and I just, I just love the aesthetics, the design of it. And this is my all-time favorite, right? William Sonoma, uh, based out of the US. And again, not to take anything away from any of the other sites that you guys are designing. This is just some I've shared with you. Um, and one thing, you know, I normally ask when I share this in class a lot of times is basically, the, the pictures, you can see how, how much attention is taken to the actual graphics and the design is very, very minimalistic, but at the same time, they emphasize on every single picture that's there. So these are college students that I'm, that I'm usually working with and uh, they're able to see you know, amazing pictures of you know, kitchen utensils, which college students typically do not appreciate, but they're always in awe and they're amazed by this website. So I'm just sharing that with you. Uh, and of course, there's so many available. 
Uh, but the design is really, really important in terms of have that vision that you want to share with your with your team and make sure they can follow that by by sharing with them you know some of the some of the great designs out there uh, based on your brand based on your colors and you can brainstorm on this but have a superstar team have a superstar team that can that can deliver you guys are familiar with jet.com you know pretty successful site again um, you know you have very bold environments you have bold colors you have you know, different types of sites exist and again find out which is the one that is closest to what you're trying to get at uh, and this is really really useful to do uh, booking.com i don't think you can have an e-commerce presentation without booking.com uh, simply because they're you know probably one of the most uh there's no probability about it to me they're the most persuasive site there ever has existed you know um, that's why we're able to you know a lot of people i know they're all a lot of people i know they're basically using booking.com because in their experience that they provide, and I'm sure you, you know, you're familiar with this, of course, they try so hard to provide you as much information, whether it is somebody else booking from your city or et cetera. It just makes it so easy for you to decide. And you end up paying 10, 15, 20% extra. Why? But you're paying for that experience. So guys, whenever you build something, create, it, create that amazing team around you and let them know, this is the kind of experience that we want to provide. So provide that wow experience and your clients will love you for it. So moving forward, you know, just some of the things that I've learned, you know, um, so starting up e-commerce, I mean, starting up your idea, right? Starting up your, your business idea. And as some of you, and I've heard some of these questions regarding, uh, regarding startups, right? So your idea is, is very, very important, right? To make sure that your idea actually gets, um, something that, you know, people actually want, right? So the idea is, is supremely important. Make sure that ideas define, make sure you're tackling a problem. Right? You wanna make sure that there is something you are addressing in your, um, in your value proposition that you are, you are looking at doing. Right, so you have the problem that you're solving, an idea that you have, then of course your product that you're gonna be building. So this is where your team comes in. So the, the wonderful thing about e-commerce is you know, you, you can get that site up and running the same afternoon. Right, or soon after that. I mean, that can be up and running in one afternoon, or in a couple of hours. You know, uh, but it is that experience that you want to provide. It is all the you know ev all the little uh, intricate details that have to go through to make that checkout process as seamless and as you know as easy to use as possible. And now with omnichannel, with mobile, you know, and you can just see how much attention mobile is getting for all the obvious reasons simply because all all of our people are mobile right we're we're on mobile when we shouldn't be on mobile what's the last thing you do before you go to bed it's on your mobile and what's the first thing you do when you rise out of bed same thing right so there's a reason why we have to pay so much attention uh to the mobile platform because um very very, very rightly so it's where all the customers are and if you know, if you can build a product that is very, very mobile friendly, because that is where your customers are, um, you will have really, really good success, right? So in terms of building the product um, is the challenging part. It can be easy in terms of, you know, having the right team, uh, but, you know, it's uh, really, really useful to build something that people want, right? Keep this in mind. People want to use it, and that, that way you'll have, you know, good success in doing that. It's all about your team. Right? It's all about the team that is working with you. Um, it makes it makes it it makes it fun first of all. Right? So something I always share with clients: you know, you need to you want to enjoy this thing. It's, you know, you're building your own startup. You're building your own e-commerce platform. If you don't enjoy it, it's really really sad. Right? You need to basically enjoy it, have fun, and it's your team. Right? You need to have try to build the best team that you can. What's available to you? Right? But you know, go for people that that can share your vision. These sound very cliche, but they're so important. If you have ever done any hiring, you know how important these things are. So have your team that build the best team you can. It definitely will go a long way, right? Have, you know, have the core values that you're working towards. Share that with your, with your team members. You know, keep it as transparent as possible, as possible. Give as much credit as you can whenever you can. It's really good. And of course, it's the execution. Right? So you need to execute, execute, execute. The worst thing for a startup is 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 growth. Right? You need to make sure you need you manage that growth. Right? 
The worst thing is when you slow down. That's, that's the worst thing for a startup. So make sure you are handling the growth. Think big. You know, definitely want to think big. Start small, move fast, break things as much as you can. That way, at least you're doing something, right? And um, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate you guys listening. I hope it's been useful. Uh, thanks a lot, Mustafa. Uh, one you one key good. insight I got from your presentation was the fact that uh, companies should definitely not work in silos and uh, align their goals in order to uh, think for the big picture and actually okay. deliver uh, uh, macro results for the company. That's correct. Uh, I, I totally agree with you. This is so, so important. Yeah. In the same time, I have two questions for you. So based on your uh, experience, uh, what do you think that's the common mistake that unexperienced e-commerce companies do? And we can start with this one. Sure, sure. I think, I think a lot of it, Albert, is uh, it has to do with the fact that, uh, again, it comes from experience. You know? And again, experience is something they, they will have to work towards, right? So it's, it's the vision that you know, a lot of, lot of e-commerce you know, directors and managers, uh, they're not able to share that vision with, with the team members. I mean, if you just simply share that vision and have everybody work towards it, let them make all the mistakes they can, but as long as they get to the end result, if you have some quotas you wanna reach, uh, if there's a number that you're trying to get in terms of your metrics, as long as they're working towards that, and that main goal, that north star that you're setting up is clear to them, it's, it's, it's human nature. People make mistakes, but as long as you, you, know, you come back and you fix things up, um, this would be very, very important. Um, another area where people would be you know, uh, reluctant or maybe they're you know, common to make mistakes is again on the experience side of it. Right? There are some pretty amazing experiences that you can just take a look at about what other companies are provided. And uh, I think mobile now is playing such a major role uh, where it becomes that, you know, mobile first. I remember a time where, you know, it's mobile second strategy, but yeah. now it's, it's all mobile, right? If you just go with mobile, you're, you're totally fine. So, um, yeah, sharing the same vision and, you know, and working towards one goal, but I think would be a really good way of minimizing uh, any shortcomings. Great. So the second question would have been what is the most important and vital things for uh, unexperienced e-commerce companies to actually do? But I think you kind of cover that in, in answering the first question. Sure. Perfect. Sure. Um, definitely. definitely. So guys, if you have any questions, please write them down and uh, yeah, Mustafa uh, will, will answer them. Uh, otherwise, uh, that's all for now. Thanks once again for uh, uh, having this presentation with us, uh, Mustafa. Wish, wish you the best. And yeah, you guys uh, write questions here or directly contact Mustafa. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. All the best, guys. We wish you guys the very best. Thanks a lot. Same. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.